Time now for a full hour of Wings Sprint Car Talk. It's Wings Nation with Steve Post and Aaron Evernham. Wait, hold on. Uh, Steve's at a dirt track in Ohio. Aaron's at a beach with Ray. We we need someone here. Uh, how about this? Here's Ashley Strimmy and Chris Tolan. <laughs> Welcome in, folks. We're so glad you have tuned in to MRN's Wing Nation. That is correct. Steve Post is on a plane, I believe, to Eldoro Speedway, and uh, Aaron's at the beach. Unfortunately, so I Steve wish. Steve can't hear this, then. Right? Yeah, exactly. Steve. That's exactly oh, that's awesome. right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <Thank> goodness. <laughs> and and I'm jealous of both of them. They're yeah. both in wonderful places right at the moment, and I wish I could be there too. But uh, we're your hosts today, Ashley Stremmy, alongside with Chris Dolak from Speed Sport News. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Hey, I'm uh, happy to be here. I know the bullpen uh, must be going deep in the bullpen if uh, I'm getting that call. So, oh, come on, you've done it before, and uh, we know we'll you're great. And I here. know that you are an encyclopedia full of racing knowledge with with everything you've ever done in the past, and and now what you're doing with Speed Sport News. We'll I know you're a good hour, guy for we? the job. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but we have a great show on tap for you today. We have Mike Kirshner joining us. He's going to talk a little bit about the um, the uh, Knoxville. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And Mike is uh, going to come on. We're going to do another row of our uh, Speed Sport uh, Knoxville Nationals uh, Ultimate A Main. It's been uh, it's been pretty neat. Uh, it's been a, a lot of great debate for sure. Absolutely. So it'll get more debated today. <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit here later on. We've also got David Gravel, your uh, Joker's Wild winner um, from the Kings Royal this weekend. We have Craig Delansky. He picked up the win at Knoxville. And last but certainly not least, we have Braden McMahon. He picked up his first 410 win at um, Antioch Speedway this weekend. Um, unfortunately, his dad was at the Kings Royal, and they were all watching it on Periscope, and it was a pretty good time. So we'll have to talk to him about that yeah, a little bit as well. Uh, that'll be entertaining. But uh, some other Valco Racing Wheels results that we have for this weekend. Obviously, we were talking, the big one is the World of Outlaws, the King Royal this weekend, and Eldora. Um, David Gravel, he picked up the 10000 to win. Uh, Donnie Schatz and Rico Abreu there in second and third. Friday, the night before, is 12000 to win. Darren Pittman picked up the win for that. And last but certainly not least, Donnie Schatz. We, we He's everyone, good. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I yeah. mean, it just depends on who you ask because it seems like this year they're all putting him on this bad bandwagon that he's not living up to his standards but he has 15 wins this year yeah you know another year 15 wins leading the points <laughs> in the middle of summer just picked up fifty thousand dollars spent the next day uh racing a late model and then uh working with his uh uh, niece is uh, go kart racing. So yes, just I typical. saw they were all out to yep. breakfast yep. for yep. sure. Yep. But he's having a, a bad season. So, uh, listen, I would love to have a bad yeah, season a if that's what it amounts to like that, for yeah. Donnie Shots. <laughs> Absolutely. King of the West Sprint Saturday, they were at Ocean Speedway for the Howard Caden Classic. Kyle Hurst, a second consecutive win for the Classic. Shane uh, Goldbrack and Bud Cading were second and third in that. Bumper to Bumper IRA Sprint Saturday at Wilmont Speeding. It was Bill Bay. Log. Neil Tires Midwest Open Wheel Association at Friday at Lincoln, Illinois Speedway. It was Willie Croft. Make it a long trip over there. Yeah, is that far for him? It is. Hmm. He's from, I think he's from out west. Out in oh, California. really? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Well, that's like that Ocean Speedway. We, um, we're we going to feature talk about it a little bit this weekend on our MAV TV show. Mm -hmm. And I've never been to some of the tracks in California. And it's it's a mountain in the background. There's no ocean anywhere close to it. And I'm like, well, maybe they should have named it Mountain Speedway <laughs> instead of Ocean Speedway. But uh, weekly 410 racing, we're going to shoot up to Pennsylvania Friday at Lernerville. It was Jack Soder Sodeman Jr. Williams Grove, it is the tune-up race for the World of Outlaws. Of course, Lance DeWeese, he has been on one heck of a roll this year. That 69K group is on fire. It's unbelievable what they're doing right now. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, with the Outlaws coming in there this week, uh, later this week, it's it's going to be a neat race. It'll be neat to see what Lance can do against those guys. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Outlaws, posse. Uh, come on, come on. What do you think it's going to be this weekend? <laughs> I spent too much time with the outlaws to go the other way right now. So <laughs> I did live in Pennsylvania for a while, but you uh, did. Yeah, I did uh, up near uh, actually up near Lernerville, but uh, um, you know Donnie's Donnie's Donnie, and uh, and quite honestly, what Pittman and Sweet and the KKR guys and and knowing what Gravel's doing with with uh, that car too yes. being basically a Pennsylvania car, um, 
those guys are coming in loaded. So it'll be interesting. <laughs> well, of course, you all know that I'm the posse girl. So I am, yeah, I am right. ultimately going to roll with PA posse. And if it is Lance DeWeese, I'm pretty sure they may burn that place down <laughs> <Very well. laughs> because it is truly remarkable what he's been doing this year and with the group of the 69K. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep. Um, Saturday, Badlands Motor Speedway, Brandon, South Dakota. It was Mark Dobmeyer, Buffalo River Race Park in Minnesota. It is Wayne Nigard. And, of course, Knoxville Raceway, Craig Delansky. We will talk to him um, coming up later in the show. But right now, we are going to bring on Mike Kirshner. Mike, are you on with us? Yes, I am. All right. You're going to – you and Chris, I know this is in your wheelhouse here because it's a speed sport news deal. So I'm going to let you two tear it up with this one. Well, Mike and I are print guys, so it's very – you know, this whole experience here is very surreal for us print guys to have to be on a <laughs> camera, on radio, and talk. <laughs> It's really easy to do it when we're sitting there in the office. But, uh, Mike, let's, um, you know, as, as most people know, what we've been doing this year uh, with the uh, Knoxville Nationals and uh, coming up, we, we decided that we needed to, to make the ultimate A main. Um, it just, uh, we were arguing too much over who would be here, who would be there. <laughs> and so we put it out to a lot of different people, Wing Nation included. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we got a lot of feedback back, and, and we've created the four wide, the ultimate four wide. For the uh, for the nationals and uh, so far we've revealed uh, the first two rows of that uh, the back two rows actually the mm -hmm. sixth and fifth and uh, Mike you've got the next row you want to roll them out yeah you think we should recap uh, rows uh, six and five first well, that would be Absolutely. a good idea you know maybe you should be here Mike helping <laughs> me out cause... I love it so well we keep each other in line right <laughs> yes we do that's <laughs> what it's all about so twenty fourth was Jeff Swindell. 23rd is Craig Kinzer, 22nd is Jay Woodside, 21st, Craig Delansky, 20th, Jerry Riker, 19th, Roy Robbins, 18th, Dick Gaines, and 17th is Tim Schaefer. So go ahead with 16, Mike. All right, 16 is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, the first driver in uh, Countdown uh, who has not won the Knoxville Nationals. Right, so as we get going forward from uh, this point forward, all the remaining drivers uh, would be a former winner of the race. So Stevie okay. would be the last driver who has yet to win, and I say yet to win because every year he <laughs> goes there, he's got the potential to win it. Yeah, Stevie Smith is number 16. Uh, he has 21 A-main starts at the Knoxville Nationals. Uh, his first was in 1989. His most recent started in 2014 uh, in 21 starts. Six top five finishes and fourteen top ten finishes. Impressive. It's a pretty good record. That's, yeah, and not like a lot of guys win. That's that. the part that's that yeah. stinks for sure. Uh, interestingly, uh, his best finish in the Knoxville Nationals came in nineteen ninety three, and uh, in nineteen ninety he battled the driver who was number fifteen on our list at the front of the field <laughs> for much of the nineteen ninety race. Bobby Allen went on to one of the most surprising upsets in the history of the Knoxville Nationals, and he is number 15 on the list. The win was came in his 10th of 11 A-main starts to the Knoxville Nationals, three top five and six top ten finishes. Wouldn't it be something else if he becomes a race-winning car owner this year? Uh, How cool would that be? What I mean, that story would be incredible. I know it's... Be a challenge it would be for those incredible, guys. And, and let's debate for five seconds. Would that be a bigger upset than when he won? I think so. I think so. I think so. I, I would agree on that. Who would do it, though, Logan or Jacob? Logan. I Logan? would go with Logan. Oh, man. Jacob's pretty relaxed around there. Yeah. No. But, <laughs> but Logan's got the win this year. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's what I would base my my theory off of anyhow is his World of Outlaw win just a few weeks ago. There are things we all wish we could see happen. <laughs> no doubt. Be spectacular. <laughs> Number 14 on the list uh, is Greg Weld. He only qualified for four Knoxville Nationals A-Main features, but finished in the top six in every one of them. Wow. And he won in 1963 and was the runner-up the following season after starting in 22nd position. That's really Again, impressive. I mean, these guys that there there are a handful of of guys that only made a few starts, but they made the most of them. No question.
question about it. And I, you know, a lot of drivers, you know, back in those days with the, the switch back and forth of the format from wing to non-winged, you know, some guys were there one year and not the next, and they had other commitments. A lot of other guys like like Weld and the guy who's going to be number 13 on our list also had commitments running USAC IndyCar races and those sort of things. So they didn't make the Nationals every year. Pretty, with that said, point. let's roll to 13. Yeah. Number 13 is Joe Saldana, father of uh, current racer uh, Joey Saldana, who just missed making our list of 24 drivers this year. Uh, eight a main starts to the Nationals, won the race from the pole in 1970, uh, finished in the top eight in every one of his Knoxville National starts. That's not a bad track record. I don't think uh, any of them are, and no. let's be honest. I mean, we're talking about the 24 guys in the yeah. history of the Knoxville Nationals. Truly, I don't know how you guys put it all together because I'm sure you got lists from, you know, all your sources that you were using, but to try to actually narrow it down to one, how hard did that really become? We assigned – well, Mike, do you want to go into that? You can go into that. Well, we just uh... – of the voters that, that we had, we assigned uh, point totals to each ballot, okay. and then uh, it was really basically decided on points. Uh, surprisingly, it w weren't that many drivers selected, as many as you would think anyway. 34 different drivers got votes, and 24 of those uh, obviously made the list. We We put the numbers in there to take some of the – emotions out of it sure because absolutely. there's i mean we all and we asked people um we had some historians involved uh different media uh some racers because we wanted to we wanted to make sure one we didn't miss that guy who who had done just incredible stuff but before i saw it sure and uh, <laughs> um it, but then you know like mike mentioned joey just missed the list but he still has time to, to make He's, that list. He still later has time on. to make yeah, that absolutely. list. Yeah, there's you know, and I uh, I think I went to bat for Joey, but um, you know, we just there was debate, and then when you put the numbers to it, it takes all the debate out of it. You say, okay, sure. here are the numbers, and absolutely. and so you take the emotion out of it, and you go, these ten people who we believe are ten of the best organization or people or organizations to to cast their ballots on this thing, they decided and um, and. Uh, well, oh, yeah. with it. Awesome. Well, Mike, we appreciate you sharing those next four with us, and we look forward to the next four next week. Thank you very much for having me, and it gets uh, really interesting after this from the from uh, <laughs> fifteen through number one. Definitely. I'm excited. I I might have an idea of who's who's going to be there, and I think some others will as well. But uh, it'll be very interesting, and I think it's a really cool deal. Thanks again, Mike. You're very welcome. Thank you. Awesome. We'll be right back to talk to David Gravel here on It's Not Sling and Dirt. That's my show. This is Wing Nation <laughs> here on MRN.com. Winged Nation kicking up dirt with Steve and Aaron right after this on MRN.com. Aggressive Hydraulics, where we engineer the cylinders that move your business. We specialize in crafting hydraulic cylinders and components with superior precision and performance, making OEM products stronger and creating more opportunities for distributors and repair facilities. Crafting cylinders that operate on a global basis in a wide variety of industries and applications. Get aggressive with your cylinder challenges. Aggressive Hydraulics. If your vehicle isn't stopping like it used to, head to O'Reilly Auto Parts and take advantage of the exclusive Do It Right rebate. Just purchase a set of Brake Best Select or Select Ceramic Brake Pads and you'll receive a $10 O'Reilly gift card by mail. Plus, enjoy quiet, safe, worry-free braking. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Leading the race in innovation, Freightliner Trucks designed the Cascadia Evolution to lower your real cost of ownership. When powered by the integrated Detroit powertrain with a DT12 automated manual transmission and intelligent powertrain management, the Cascadia Evolution can achieve up to a 13% fuel efficiency increase over the first generation EPA 2010 compliant Cascadia model, keeping you on the road and in the race longer. Learn more about the Cascadia Evolution at FreightlinerTrucks.com. Freightliner Trucks, run smart. 
Hi, I'm Casey Kane. Now back to Wing Nation. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Joining us here on the Hercules Hotline on the Classic Inc. pole position, it is your joker. Goodness gracious, that's easy for me to say. Jokers, Easier than me, I know that. <laughs> your jo- Joker's, Joker's wild, wild winner, David Gravel. Welcome to the show, David. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Unfortunately, I'm not doing real well. I can't even speak right at the moment. But you had a pretty good weekend this weekend. I know it was a little frustrating on Friday and Saturday, but it started off really good on Thursday night with that win. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a really good night. Uh, we quick timed our group. Uh, won our heat, won the dash, and uh, you know, won the feature. It was a pretty uh, smooth night, and uh, a lot of things went our way. Um, you know, Friday we finished fifth, which was still good. But uh, Saturday uh, was a little frustrating, uh, qualifying good, and then uh, being in a tough spot in the heat race and, uh, you know, finishing fourth in the heat just put us uh, starting 20th in the feature, and it's tough to do uh, really well uh, starting back there. Hey, David, I know that um, all you guys, and I don't believe a word of it, but you guys always <laughs> say, well, we don't worry about points, we don't look at points, we don't look at points. You're third in points right now. You've got you're, you're only behind shots with with top fives. You're you're right there at top tens with with him as well. Um, with the four wins this year, you guys have been on fire. Um, are you looking at points, David? Tell me, are you looking at points? <laughs> Be honest. Uh, you, you look at it. Uh-huh. You know, uh, everybody gets it. all excited, and you know, I just let them know that we have you know thirty plus races to go. So, uh, you know, a lot could change in a week or two, but. No, I definitely look at it. Um, I just don't get too excited about it just because, you know, a lot of things could change in, in a couple races. So, uh, you know, we didn't make the show at Attica, and Brad Sweet did, and then, you know, he had a couple uh, bad nights. So it's just one of those things that's up and down. Uh, you know, the top six cars are extremely good, and uh, they're always in the hunt every night. So uh, it's always a tight battle. No doubt. I've always said that points racing is like chasing a unicorn sometimes <laughs> because you watch it and you really study it and it goes the other direction, unfortunately. But I want to talk about a little bit about the Joker's Wild Race because I watched highlights from it. And, David, I have to know what was going through your mind when Shots showed his nose and pulled the slider on you there. Were you like, no, man, this one's mine this time? <laughs> uh, I was committed, you know, uh, I tried to protect the slide job on him uh, in three and four, but he kind of ran the bottom and, and dove extremely low. And um, I know if he if he tried to pass me, we probably would have crashed. Um, but I was committed, and uh, you know I think he saw me there, and, and then kind of turned the car a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I was uh, I was determined to uh, get past that uh, finish line first. You've got big wins uh, now. You've you've got big wins at Eldora. You've got big wins at uh, Williams Grove, and you know, obviously, the, as the summer goes along here, there's a there's a big carrot out there. And we were actually looking yesterday, looking at some some of your stats from uh, out at Knoxville last year. You had a really good run out there. You were great on the qualifying night. You had a good run in the feature. H- have you guys started to look toward that week out there and and putting plans together? Um, you know, everybody looks forward to Knoxville. Uh, when we were there earlier this year with the Outlaws, uh, we left there pretty confident and excited to go back. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to it. Uh, last year I had a really good prelim night there, and Knoxville has always treated me pretty well. So uh, we've always been strong there no matter what car I'm in. Uh, just looking to get a good uh, finish that Saturday night and, uh, you know, see what we could do. Well, you talked about Williams Grove. And that's the one coming up now. So I, I have to ask. Now, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, so I, I'm a little biased. But uh, what are your thoughts going into Pennsylvania this weekend at Williams Grove? Um, it's always really tough. Uh, sometimes you never know. Well, you just got to get qualified. You can pull that pill or, or something like that, and it can make it for a really, really long night. So, um, you know, you just go in there uh, with confidence and uh, try to lay down a couple good laps in qualifying and hopefully put yourself in a good position because if you do that, it's a lot easier than digging yourself a hole. It's probably one of the hardest places to dig yourself out. Very what, interesting. What advice are you, if any, not that you need any, but 
you've got you know this ride this year going back in there um as you you know you've already been there once now the second time with this car this year mm -hmm. is it different from what you've done in the past going in there or you know your experience is, is you as you gain experience racing on this series uh every time you go back to a track i know that definitely helps but with this setup this year and this ride and barry and everything um how is it different going into williams grove this year well barry spent a lot of years racing in pa you know being born and raised there um and obviously the car owners from pa so yep. you know everybody wants to run good when they're close to home and especially when they have you know a little bit of rivalries uh between the local guys so uh, it's always important to run good at every track, but especially a little bit more there. So we struggled a little bit last time. I'm sure we'll probably – we've learned a lot since then, so I'm sure we're going to unload probably a little bit different than we were uh, last time and uh, hopefully uh, get qualified and, uh, you know, make everybody happy. Well, David, I want to talk to you a little bit um, about you being from Connecticut and being a sprint car driver because most of it is, you know – Midwest, Pennsylvania, it doesn't typically come from any farther up than New York as sprint car drivers. And you're from Connecticut. Explain, you know, where you got your start in racing and why sprint cars? Um, I raced quarter midgets on asphalt when I was a kid, uh, up to about uh, 13 years old. And then we bought a legend car for asphalt and uh, a micro sprint for dirt. And, um, I just really loved the micro and wanted to pursue that direction just because I had a lot more fun and I was a little bit better at it probably. And uh, we just kept moving up. We raced in a track in Massachusetts and then started racing in Pennsylvania. And uh, I got to watch a couple of sprint car races at Lincoln Speedway. And uh, we just took that route. We got a 360 and raced with URC for a year. And, uh, you know, then we hopped on the all-star tour. Is your experience, I've talked to the guys about it, um, because right now, as you mentioned earlier, you look at the points in the, the top six, top really top ten, you know, you can almost throw a blanket over it. It's going to change a lot. But the uh, I remember talking with Darren a little bit about it, and the the experience level that you guys all have now, and, and now that you've got a few years out there, you're in there too, where you've seen all these tracks multiple times. You know, we all talk about how the competition level is crazy out there. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you see that, too? I mean, are you seeing the competition level? And, in essence, everybody has the same amount of experience going back to these tracks. Yeah, it's just one of those things. You know, Shane Stewart, Donnie Schott, Darren Pittman, Brad Sweet, you know, all these guys, Joey Saldana, ha have been racing for a long time. And they're always in the hunt. You know, uh, I'm saying three-quarters of those drivers are in the dash about every night. So, um, it's extremely tight, extremely competitive, and uh, you have to be consistent with these guys because if you have a bad night, they make you pay for it. So um, it's it's I think it's as tough as it's ever been. I think the top six guys' stats of top fives and top tens have to be way higher than they ever have been the past couple years. Um, you know, typically, you know, the top two or maybe three drivers will have a great season, but really overall, the top five or six guys have been pretty stout all year. Absolutely. It's so true. Yeah. I, and the, the schedule is always so crazy, and it's all across the country. But uh, I saw you were at Cedar Point yesterday. So what else does yep. David Gravel like to do when he is not behind the wheel of a sprint car? Um, well, my girlfriend was out with me this whole past month, so we try to do some fun stuff. We, we went to the Mall of America for the first time. Uh, we went to Cedar Point, obviously, yesterday. Um, we went down Apple River and uh, near Cedar Lake, Wisconsin there. Um, we went to Chicago, never been there either, so we got to check out a lot of cool stuff there. Um, other than that, uh, with my T-shirt, man, I get to kind of do my own thing and, and drive different places and kind of on my own schedule. So that's, uh, that's definitely good and, and keeps me sane out here. But, park, uh, park that thing I'm on the home, side of the road. If and... I'm home which I'm never home, uh, you know, uh, I, I like to uh, work on cars and, and uh, drag race my Mustang probably when I'm home. My dad owns a body shop, so if it's not sprint cars, it's uh, street cars. Love so it. you're not just driving the T-shirt van down the street, you know, park it on the corner, <laughs> throw the side open, hey, D David Gravel T-shirts, David Gravel T-shirts, get yours here, get yours here. Yeah, yeah, I wish it was that easy. Maybe <laughs> maybe one day uh, when I make it big. There you go. Love it. Well, you're on your way, and I think yeah. you're pretty close. But, uh, David, we got to 
the the clock tells us we have to go. But we appreciate you being on the show, and uh, good luck this weekend in Pennsylvania. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Good luck, David. That was David Gravel on the Classic Ink pole position. Uh, Classic Ink screen printing and embroidery. Great T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, towels, hats, and more. Corporate, other sports, schools, and special events. There's drivers like Brian Brown, Donnie Schatz, Danny Dietrich, Danny Lasowski, Brady Bacon, and so much more. You can visit them online at www.classicinkusa.com. You're listening to Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, here on MRN.com. I'm Kerry Madsen, and you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Honoring Sprint Car Racing's greatest achievers. 25 historic sprint cars on display. A movie theater featuring Sprint Car Racing films. And a breathtaking view of historic Knoxville Raceway. Go to SprintCarStuff.com for the largest sprint car gift shop on the planet. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. The 25th year of the Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series is about to begin. Expanded national and regional tours, over 150 events across the United States, and some of Sprint Car Racing's biggest names and rising stars. The 25th anniversary of the Lucas Oil ASCS is one you don't want to miss. Find out when the American Sprint Car Series is near you in 2016 at ASCSRacing.com. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and catch all the action away from the track live at RacingBoys.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your A.C. is blowing hot air, let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the cool this summer. While you may need to eventually service your A.C. unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics R134A refrigerant with leak sealer. Buy two, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Back. We're back. Here on. Hey. And we're in. No one told me. I love Steve, it. this is way harder yes, than it seems. it is. Absolutely. Steve is amazing. So is Aaron. They do do a great job, and they are big shoes to fill, and I am not Steve Post, but I try. I try. <laughs> but uh, we have Craig Delansky joining us. He picked up the win at Knoxville this weekend. Craig, congratulations, and thanks for being on our show today. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks Absolutely. So Knoxville it is coming up. It's two weeks. You pick up the win this weekend. Does that, I mean, you're leading the points in the National Sprint League. Does that help winning at Knoxville to prepare for what's coming up? Yeah, you know, it sure doesn't hurt by any means. And, you know, it's kind of been a work in progress for us trying to get, uh, get a handle on our car there at Knoxville. It seems like we've been pretty strong outside of Knoxville, but not quite where we wanted to be there. And you know, we definitely took a step in the right direction Saturday night. Uh, you know, we uh, we had a good race car, so uh, to get the win there Saturday night was pretty uh, pretty important as we lead up to the biggest race of the year there at uh, the Knoxville Nationals. Craig, you were one of the guys that we actually had in our uh, ultimate A main um, with Speed Sport. Uh, you, you were in there, and uh, I know how I think I know how important that race is to you and, and to what it would mean to win it. Um, you know what. Obviously, everybody thinks they got a great chance, but what do you feel? What are you feeling this year going into it? I mean, you've had the chance to run there a little bit more this year. I got to believe that helps. Yeah, you know, again, uh, you know, we got a great race team with TKS Motorsports, Troy and Sam Renfro. Uh, you know, it's a family-owned team, and you know, they got a lot of passion for the race team, put a lot into it, and you know, we're a smaller budget team, but you know, more than anything, right now, I feel like uh, you know, we can go in there and, and, and have a shot to contend for that. Um, you know, we still got some more work to do, but. You know, we're trying to uh, keep our motor program strong. We worked on that in the off season and, and got that stronger. So, you know, with with the way things felt on Saturday, and we got a few more nights there to uh, try try to get to where we want to be. Um, you know, we're going to go in there with all we got. I can tell you that. Um, mm-hmm. you know, we got some great marketing partners with Casey General Stores and DMIP Aggressive Hydraulics, and we're just uh, you, you know our team. Uh, like you say, we're leading the NSL points. We've had some wins with the NSL series, and uh, you know it's. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's always a constant battle trying to trying to, you know, keep a handle on things and, and get stronger as you go. So, by no means are we uh, comfortable and feeling, you know, like we got everything figured out, but we're definitely closer. 
Absolutely. You talk about the NSL, and I'd like for you to just go on a little bit about it because it is in its second year, and they are promoting sprint car racing in the Midwest. How good is it for you and the racers out that, that there's something like this for them to travel and do a little bit with? Well, it's been a great series. It's been created by Todd Quarine, and, um, you know, he's put a lot into it. And, and you know, for the Midwest uh, to have a series like that, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, really, it's something that uh, that's never been here in the Midwest, so it's kind of nice to be able to race uh, pretty, pretty much in a five-state area and, and be home every weekend. Uh, you know, there's a, you know some perks to that as well. So, you, you know, it's uh, it's very competitive, I can tell you that. I mean, from, you know, Daniel Lasoski, Brian Brown, Ian Madsen, uh, and, and other teams that run that tour, it's, it's a very competitive series. And, you know, I mean, it's not always uh, the guys that run full-time with the series. There's other guys that drop in and run with us. So it's uh, it's a great series. It's, it seems to be going quite well, and uh, we're happy to be a part of it. I, you know, Craig, I was trying to figure out how you have enough time to race this year because I've been seeing what else is going on. <laughs> it seems like you've got a high school graduation party every week. <laughs> Uh, I know there's a, no, a new grandbaby that uh, comes comes your way every once in a while. How, how is that part of the the off track stuff working with you this year? Well, I had no idea how busy it could be having a teenage daughter that's graduating. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's pretty special. You know, really just trying to embrace the moment. And you know, Peyton's uh, she's an awesome young lady. Uh, very proud of her. Like you say, I mean, from prom to, to graduation to the graduation party uh, just seems like there's been something going on every week in that regard. But, um, you know, again, pretty special times for that. And then, like you said, my grandson, you know, Waylon, they came out and spent some time with us, uh, Luke and Maggie and Tessa and Waylon, and got an opportunity to spend, uh, spend a week with them. So that was, that was pretty special in itself. And to be able to spend some time with my grandson, it's, uh, I don't know, you know, like you say, it's, it's, it's been a busy year for us, uh, it seems like, but um, all in all, we're pretty fortunate. Craig, that's what I love about it. It's very family-oriented from your race team to, to you and your family as well. And I was on your wife's uh, Twitter, uh, and I have to ask. I oh, saw... Julie, watch out, Julie. Here it comes. <laughs> no, I saw the wrecked truck from the storms that you went through with your um, T-shirt trailer. I mean, they must have been pretty darn crazy. You saw the what, Ashley? The, the wrecked truck from the storms uh -huh. when you were on your way to Jackson. Yeah, well, I can tell you that was one of the craziest things I think I've ever experienced. And uh, it's something you would probably see in a movie. But, you know, literally we're heading down Highway 90 about 70 miles an hour. And I look in my mirror and the apparel trailers, uh, the tires are up even with my mirror. <gasps> and all I told Julie was I said, you better hang on because this ain't going to be good. You know, and, and I was heading straight for the ditch trying to get the trailer back underneath the truck. And as it was, it crushed the bed of the truck, but it could have been a lot worse. And uh, she was a bit white as a ghost. And. You know, once we finally got stopped and checking things out, she goes, have you seen the bed of your truck? And I was going, what are you talking about? And I looked at it, but it just kind of showed you how high that trailer got up on the, on the side and, you know, how lucky we were because it could have been a lot of worse, like I say. But tell you what, Brooke Dotton, when he was behind me, and, you know, it was hard to see, but he could see my left tail leg going up in the air, and he told us, uh, whoever was riding with him, he goes, that, that trailer is about to flip over. And it was crazy. It was oh, it was something definitely crazy to experience, but Fortunately, we came out of it with just that. So I guess it's a good thing that you were able, you're a dirt track racer because you were totally dirt tracking the thing to keep it on all four Sliding wheels. Uh, there was definitely some dirt tracking going on because we were going to head straight down into the ditch until that thing, you know, hopefully got back on underneath the truck. But, yeah, again, uh, you know, it, it was pretty uh, pretty scary for a little bit there. And, you know, fortunately, we came out of it. But, uh, you know, Julie, she's, uh, she's a great supporter, you know, my biggest fan. And, uh I'm not sure if you guys seen this past weekend, but she got a selfie with the cow that they had there. <laughs> I did show. see that, yes. Yeah, that was pretty cute. <laughs> I love it. I, now, is Julie pretty instrumental after you're done racing? That's what my husband always says, is that I'm instrumental, that I always try to tell him how to race the race car and that I've never lost a race from behind the fence. Is Julie that wife? Does she tell you where you could have done a little bit better? You know, we always, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk after talk after the races she's probably the one i talk to the most and uh you know we'll analyze things i'll self-analyze i'll analyze our team i'll just analyze a little bit of everything but yeah, at the end of the day she, she's a great support system for me you know we um we've been through a lot and uh you know we're enjoying some of the success we're having this year and, and hope to have some more and and uh you know to have her with me uh it's always been a pretty important part of my career awesome yeah i, I just i think you're in a good spot going to nationals this year um uh, probably one of the 
better ones with the the track time you've had out there and uh, the NSL experience of racing against those guys and racing around there. I I think you're in good shape, Craig. Yeah, you know I'm feeling good about that, Chris. I appreciate it. Um, you know, obviously it's a uh, you know it's a, it's a very competitive race. Um, you know, just like a lot of them are. But uh, we're gonna go in there locked and loaded with with everything we got and uh, and see if we can't get the job done. Uh, again, we got a lot of support, so we're gonna go in there with all we got. And if you do get the job done, is it victory cigars for everyone? I think I saw that posted on your hey, Twitter yeah, there. Picture, we look like some. <laughs> what do you think of that, huh? <laughs> that was good stuff. At first, I thought when I saw the cow, I thought it was steaks for everybody. But then I saw the victory cigar picture, and I thought, oh, well, maybe they're not having steaks. I think yeah, steaks, well, cigars. But if we would have got a half a side of beef, they used to give a half a side of beef away when you won on fair night. So uh, they stopped doing that, I guess, in 2010. But, you know, we had some fun lighting up a cigar after the race there. Uh, you know, I'm really not a tobacco guy. I've already, you know, it it uh, make you half sick after you have one of them things. But it's fun. <laughs> well, I want to know what the plan is if if you were to win the Knoxville Nationals. Obviously, it's going to be more than cigars, right? Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? I, I couldn't even tell you what that's going to be like, but um, it. Uh, there's going to be some it's intense be a good partying. Time of some sort, that I can tell you. <laughs> it would be some intense partying. I, I just knowing yeah. you, Craig, I think that would be a. It yeah. would be serious. It's earned, hopefully, absolutely. Hopefully you guys are right there with us. You're going to come to the Nationals, right? Oh, yeah. All right. I All love right. it. Well, yeah, it'd be one big celebration, that I, can, that I can say. Absolutely, no doubt. Well, I want to talk about, you know, your how you got into racing, your father, Bill, and, and everything that built up to where you've gotten in your career now. Where did it all really start for you? You know, really, I just, uh, you know, my dad raced um, what they call the Midwest Sprint Association back in, back in the late 70s, uh, early 80s. And just going to the racetrack with him as a kid, you know, developed my uh, my love and desire for the sport through that. And you know, I just remember riding home in the truck with him uh, after he won a uh, won a race up in Princeton, Minnesota, which is ten minutes down the road from me. And yeah, I remember driving home and he had that trophy in his truck, and I thought, wow, man, this is cool. You know, we won a trophy, and I got that trophy in my trophy room right now. It uh, just was a pretty special moment. And just uh, going to the races every weekend was just uh, part of our life, and, and just uh, something I. Uh, had a strong desire to do so you know that, that definitely got me going and, and got me the desire to do what I did and, and pursue a, a career in racing sprint cars and, and along the way I met a lot of great people you know people that gave me a shot to, to drive their race cars and, and uh, you know get in there and, and try to climb the ladder and, and get to uh, get to having some of the success that we've had over the years so just uh, definitely been blessed and fortunate to uh, race with a lot of good people along the way. Absolutely. Good stuff. It's, I love always hearing those stories about how everybody got their start. But, uh, Craig, we appreciate you being on the show today, and uh, best of luck out there for the Knoxville Nationals. Hopefully hopefully, I'll be seeing pictures from the winner's circle. Awesome. I appreciate that very much, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks you, Craig. Craig. Yep. Speaking of Knoxville, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum there in Knoxville. Very um, cool museum. Yes, it is amazing. Chance. If you've never seen it, put it on your bucket list. Put Knoxville on your bucket yeah. list. Go to the Hall of Fame while you're there. <laughs> um, they're doing the Expand the Dream, the facility expansion and endowment campaign. Um, they have their online store, which is the largest inventory of Sprint Car related merchandise in the world. You can visit SprintCarHOF.com. Um, the Sprint Car Hall of Fame birthdays this week. Sunday is Bill Randall. Wednesday is William Red Regal and Chuck Gurney. Thursday is Lewis Meyer and Shane Carson. Didn't you say you could find Shane in the phone book? You, you can find <laughs> anybody can find Shane Carson. He, it's it, Shane is. No matter where you go, you, Shane's like Norm from Cheers. So <laughs> you know, we walked into a restaurant at two o'clock in the morning. Shane, I said, come on. You know, Shane, everybody knows Shane. Uh, Shane knows everybody. He's done such a great job uh, around the Devil's Bowl uh, World of Outlaws mm -hmm. event, bringing uh, some of the, the older drivers back and, and reunions and things like that. It's, it's so cool. Uh, he's a great friend of mine and uh, just a really cool guy. Love it. Well, his birthday is Thursday. Uh, Friday it is, is it Emil Andres? Emil, uh, yes. Emil Andres? Yes. All righty. And then Saturday, Ian Madsen. Uh, he had a pretty good run this weekend at the run. Kings Royal. Yep. Absolutely. Pretty pretty stout deal there. He, enough to be a proud of, for sure. Definitely. Another absolutely. guy to keep an eye on uh, coming up this month of money. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, Shots isn't 
running that well this year. <laughs> I still can't believe people are so hung up on that. But, uh, hey, 15 wins. I'll take them no matter what. Uh, we'll be right back here on Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires on MRN.com. Hi, this is Sam Haferteep. You're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Racers, that's who Valco Wheels are. That's who they know, and racing is what they know. Valco Wheels focuses oval track and grassroots racing and understand racers need a quality wheel that fits your budget. With over 25 years' experience, Valco Wheels produces the best product and give you face-to-face support and customer service at the track. Fast delivery, innovative products, problem solving. Find Valco Wheels at Valco.com on Twitter or Facebook or call Valco Wheels at 609-758-7013. Valco Wheels. Friday nights, it's all sprint cars. Saturday nights, it's IMCA Modifieds and Stock Cars. Come out to the Jackson Motorplex this Friday night for the Richard White Memorial, presented by the State Bank of Fairmont. The Spirit Lake Silver and Gold NSL 410 Sprints return to action on the big half mile, along with the last deck 360s and the Race Saver 305 Sprints. Hot laps begin at 7.30. Saturday night's Fan Appreciation Night. Free adult admission with an advanced ticket. Hot laps begin at 7. The all-new Jackson Motorplex in Jackson, Minnesota, where kids 12 and under are free. You just gotta be there. Live sports are the one true reality entertainment, where a single dramatic moment can become timeless. In NASCAR, Motor Racing Network's live broadcasts elevate your senses to the sights, sounds, and struggles taking place on the racetrack. Keselowski to the bottom of the racetrack. He tries to slide up. Newman is there. Sideways is Keselowski. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. Hi, I'm Jeff Gordon, and now back to Wing Nation. Welcome back to Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires here on MRN.com. We are excited to talk to this next guy. He picks up his very first 410 Sprint Car win. It is Brayden McMahon. Welcome to the show, Brayden. Hi, uh, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. <laughs> right? I, 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 I saw your Twitter, and you still have the plaque. You picked up your first win in your 18th race. Did you sleep with the plaque that night? Uh, I might have. had a couple <laughs> sharp corners on it, but uh, it didn't beat me up too bad. It was, it was pretty cool, though. Guess you've probably slept with it every night since <laughs> then, not, not just the first night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's really, really cool. Brayden, I mean, what was going through your mind? I mean, you're only 18 races into your sprint car debut, and, and that's really early to be picking up a win in a, in a sprint car. That's really awesome. I mean, were you talking to yourself in the helmet the whole time as those la- laps were counting down? Uh, yeah, there was a uh, there was a red with about eight to go, oh. and I, I was sitting there in the red thinking, holy cow, I'm still in the lead. <laughs> and uh, so... After we went back green, I was just counting down every lap, making sure I didn't miss my marks because the track was narrow, and if I missed the line, I was going to be shuffled way back. So I just made sure I didn't mess up, and thankfully I didn't, and got the win. So how many times have you watched the video (laughs) of your dad, Paul, watching the video of you? How many times have you clicked and watched that thing? Uh, I've watched it quite a bit. It uh, gets me a, a little emotional seeing um, my dad watch that. It's uh, pretty cool. Just um, It's cool to see that how proud he was, and you can hear my mom and all them screaming. It's, uh, <laughs> it's unreal. Uh, so it gets me a little emotional. Oh, that's really awesome. And that, that just shows the heart and the passion that goes into the McMahon family. I mean, you've watched your dad race all your life, and now you're getting to follow in his footsteps. I, I can't imagine what that is like and having a mentor like your dad. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I wish um, he could be at more of my races, but I understand that uh, mm-hmm. he's got to go make money so he can send me to college. I guess that's kind of important. So, um, But, yeah, it's cool. We, after every race, we uh, I call him, and we go through my night. And I also have his brother, my Uncle Bob, there to help keep my head on straight and make sure I don't uh, try to out, outdo my own skill level. And, um, I don't know, we, just, we have a lot of fun. Just uh, me, my uncle, and my great-uncle. And, I don't know, it's a uh, really good time, and I'm glad I got a win with him. 
How, how far in the quarter midgets did you go? I don't remember. I, I know I've talked to your dad about it. I know your dad was a tremendous quarter midget racer, um, ch national champion, I think. And uh, you know, how far did you go with those? Um, I'm pretty sure I've raced more sprint car races than I have for okay. midget races. So <laughs> I, I didn't have a lot of experience, and I had about 10 years off of racing yeah. before I got to a sprint car. So uh, I didn't go very far. So what's that transition been like? I mean, you take all that time off and you just jump in the seat of a sprint car? Uh, yeah, it was the, the second time I ever started the sprint car was for a hot lap. So um, that first night uh, last year was a little shaky. Um, <laughs> I was hardly ever in the gas. I just wanted to make sure I, I didn't want to crash anybody, and I thankfully I didn't. And it was, uh, I don't know, it's not the easiest thing to just hop into a sprint car and go fast. And <laughs> I've thankfully been able to adjust at a decent rate and hopefully can just continue to get better. How far do you want to go with this? How far? Uh, yeah. I mean... My dream is to be a World of Outlaws driver, but um, mm -hmm. I realize that that's definitely not the easiest thing to do. So um, I, I'd like to continue racing for as long as I can because it's, it's fun. It's what I've been around for all 21 years of my life, and uh, I don't want to give it up. So mm -hmm. I'll race until I, I know that I can't anymore. I'm just envisioning someday – you're out there on the tour, and, and your dad and Joey are running your T-shirt trailer instead of the other way <laughs> yeah, around. That, that would uh, that would that'd be pretty funny to see, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's what racing's all about, though, is it being a family sport, and it's really cool. Even the McMahon family, we were just talking about it with Craig Delansky and how his family and everyone's so involved. You talked about going to college, so I know your your racing schedule is probably limited. Uh, so what is it that you're going to school for? Um, I want to become a teacher. Okay. Uh, the two things I love in life are racing and basketball, and I'm definitely not athletic enough to be a basketball player, but uh, if I was a teacher, I'd get weekends off to go race, and I could be a basketball coach or something like that. So I figured uh, that'd be the path to go to make sure I'm happy. Sounds like your mom's influence. Yeah. <laughs> I got a, I got a lot of both both parents influencing me with what I want to do. So, so when you go when you tell people you're going back to Knoxville, uh, you know it depends I guess on which crowd you're in as to which Knoxville people are talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, it uh, it definitely depends on who you're around. Um, your age kind of determines what uh, what you go and do there. Well, no. and, and you being a volunteer, that's where you're going to school at. So uh, Knoxville, Tennessee is what most people would think, oh, I would assume. Oh. Yeah, yeah, well, that, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. No, you're fine. I'm more nervous for this interview than I am for when I started on the poll. So. <laughs> well, um, don't be nervous. Should we yeah, finish Knoxville. it on Twitter? We could finish it on Twitter, <laughs> right? And, yeah. you're when, an... uh, I, I tell people every year that I go from Knoxville to Knoxville because well, my last race of the year is Knoxville, Iowa, and then we drive home, I pack up my stuff, and I go to Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, All my friends at school, they like to give me trouble about, uh, I skipped one of our biggest football games of the year last year to go race, and I finished last, of course, because it was with the Outlaws, and they're like, you skipped the biggest weekend ever to go finish last. And they don't understand uh, what racing is to me, and that's why I like being around the people in Knoxville, Iowa, more than Knoxville, Tennessee. And, and I know you, you're up and down the road with the guys over the summer, um, or you have been, now you're racing, so not so much, but you, you're running the, helping out with the merch trailers and things like that. But you guys, your family has one of the most iconic RVs out there. Can you explain to people what Uncle Buck is? Um, Uncle Buck's our motorhome we got um – when my dad first went out on the road in uh, 1996, so he's this is his 20th year out on the road. Um, he's got way too many miles on him, but uh, <laughs> it's just our old motorhome that somehow keeps going up and down the road, and we uh, it, it makes you get along with your family because you're in a tight, confined space for the majority of your time going up and down the road. And um, I was actually waiting until I got back to. Uh, 
back to Uncle Buck, and I, me and my sister were going to throw together a little video of like a MTV Cribs type thing <laughs> for Uncle Buck. <laughs> and that's just what we we do is uh, the pastime, and just kind of shows how Uncle Buck means a lot to to us. I'm picturing this like brown and tan Winnebago, like that. That's <laughs> ultimately what's in my head right at the moment. <laughs> It's uh, honestly kind of worse than that. Uh, <laughs> it's got, it was, I guess, this weird, like, rainbowish looking <laughs> colors surrounded by, uh, surrounding a whole bunch of, like, eggshell colors. And uh, <laughs> it's been faded from all, all the time it's been out in the sun. So it just, it's our little uh, redneck mobile that gets us up and down the road. Hey, that's where memories are made, though. And, and knowing your oh, yeah. dad's, your dad's, uh, uh, luck if you will with airlines it's probably more reliable than that anyway so oh oh yeah um mcmahon's and luck don't really go together and especially when you're trying to fly um even i have bad luck trying to fly but i don't fly as much as my dad so uh yeah my dad um i don't know what it is but if they see paul mcmahon on their flight list they got to delay it at least 30 minutes that's hilarious. Brayden, you're, you're a huge jokester, and I, I've caught up on that with Twitter. But I want you to not be so hard on your Uncle Jim, okay? I know he <laughs> had a bad pill draw for you, but ultimately it didn't end up too terrible, did it? <laughs> no, it didn't. It, it, uh, I actually I spun out in my heat race, and if I didn't spin out in my heat race, I wouldn't have won because uh, when I spun out, I spun out trying to pass somebody, and it uh, caused the yellow, so... I restacked the field, and then I passed them, and that put me in the position for the redraw, and that's what put me on the pole. So thankfully, his uh, his pill draw ended up going our way. Everything went our way that night, and I just didn't mess it up. So it was it was pretty cool. So what's next now that you're a race winner? What do you got? How do you follow that up? Uh, win more. Um, <laughs> one day I'd like to. I mean, it's cool to be here on Wing Nation. That was a I've always listened. I used to um, schedule my classes on Tuesdays to where I wouldn't have a class so I could listen. <laughs> and uh, That's great. It'd be cool to be on here again as uh, the Joker's Wild Night winner or uh, oh. a Knoxville winner like Craig and David are. So uh, hopefully just keep winning races and keep plugging away. Love it. So where does your schedule take you now? Um, I have uh, – I'm going to Placerville. Speedway on uh, Saturday, and then um, I have a race at Chico, which is against uh, 410, so um, that's just a car count type show, and then uh, we're going back to Antioch, and hopefully can uh, uh, repeat what I did last time. Awesome, and then you can sleep with two plaques. Yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> two plaques. Give, give the other plaque a buddy. I love it. Brayden, we wish you the best of luck, and congratulations on your very first win. That's really, really awesome stuff, and uh, hopefully we'll be chatting to you again. All right. Sounds good. Thanks awesome. for having me on. Thanks, Brayden. Congrats, Brayden. I love it. Yeah, uh, that's he's a cool guy. The future of our sport, you know what I mean? And just his passion and his excitement, uh, nothing beats that very first win. You've got to watch out for him too, because he'll be, you know, he'll sneak around somewhere, and with his, you know, we joked that we we called him the Twitter user of the year, or the tweeter of the oh, year, really? or something like that, oh. because <laughs> he will he'll he'll pop up somewhere. You know, last year uh, apparently I was holding him up. Uh, we were at Knoxville, and I was holding him up with a golf cart. And next thing I look at my Twitter feed, and there's a hey Dolak, the gas pedal's on the right. Oh. You know, so um, <laughs> you know, I said I'm not even driving, but uh, you know, he is a. He, he's a really cool, cool guy and, and a great family. I mean, Paul and yes, his absolutely. whole the whole family is a, just good people. And, and that's, you know, ultimately you go across the whole sport and you look at the, the guests we had today and just really good people. In a no good doubt. Sport. And I also want to mention uh, a first win as well and also another good family. Uh, Joey Hershey picked up the win at the Speed Palace Port Royal Speedway this weekend. So I, I wanted to get that out there because that was a well-deserved win. Really um, huge win held off Greg Hodnett. I yes. Mean, anytime you can hold off. Uh, Greg Hodnett to win a race in Pennsylvania. You're doing something right. Just in, I think in Pen uh, here again. I am very biased to my Pennsylvania people, but uh, I think winning in Pennsylvania, just in general, is oh, yeah. a pretty big notch yeah. on your belt no because doubt. of the field that you compete against. The Hodnets, yep. the Lucas Wolfs, you know, yep. all those guys. It's it's pretty impressive. So uh, 
Congratulations to Joey and his whole family. I'm sure they're just as excited as Braden was definitely, just now. Definitely. I mean, it, 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 at every level, you know, that first win is such a such a huge thing. And what it does is it just spurs you on to, you know, well, that wasn't so hard. I would, why don't I do that the next time? And <laughs> then you do it. And it's like, oh, I remember how to do that now. And so, so many people talk about how getting that first win under your belt it makes the ball roll a little yeah. easier for the second one. Whether it's the first win of the season or the first win of your career, that first win seems to, it's like, Set okay, we, we broke the ice. Now we're just going to keep rolling. Absolutely. Well, we're going to keep rolling. We will be back to chat w more about the upcoming races this weekend here on Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires on MRN.com. Hi, I'm Rico Aber, and you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Classic Ink USA Screen Printing and Embroidery is constantly testing the limits of custom racewear and specialized embroidery. Headquartered in Western Pennsylvania, Classic Ink holds the highest standard, maximizing your return as well as the ultimate customer satisfaction. From track swag fan wear to quick crew crew wear, Classic Ink has you covered. Their dedicated staff and designers will keep your race team and fans looking sharp. Contact Classic Ink today and get your team ahead of the competition. www.classicinkusa.com that's Classic Ink at the track and on your back. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job, our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Hi, I'm Jeff Gordon. Did you know that 43 children are diagnosed with cancer each and every day? That more children die from cancer than any other disease? Athletes of all ages are dedicating their stats to change these stats, and you can too. Visit JeffGordonChildrensFoundation.org to become a Kick It champion. No matter what sport, you can use your points, laps, or goals to change the odds for kids with cancer. Make your stats really count. Become a Kick It champion. This is Winged Nation on MRN.com. Now, back to Steve Post and Aaron Evernham. Welcome back to Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires. We're so glad that you have joined us today. We have had some phenomenal guests. Um, we always have to talk about the Jeff Gordon's Kick It Person of the Week. Um, this week, it is Mike Baker, the PA Sprint Car News uh, website. They're doing a really cool thing, the Kick It in Cart. This Thursday, July 21st, um, they have partnered with the Beer Hill Gang at Williams Grove. Love those guys. That sounds like a party to me. <laughs> Absolutely. And here's where the party rolls in. So it's Bobby Allen Speedway oh, 94. They've got 80 drivers, and 20 of them are inv invitation only. They're pros. The Outlaws versus Posse versus the fans. They're, the drivers are selling their T-shirts, and the proceeds will go to the Kick It Foundation. And, of course, they have a barbecue truck. <laughs> that might make the news. Yeah, absolutely. That might make there the news There is a $5 cover charge, but it all goes to the proceeds all go to Kick It. So That's awesome. Really cool. Mike Baker, the PA Sprint Car uh, news website that they have doing this uh, kickball tournament with the Beer Hill Gang Thursday, July 21st. Make sure you're there. Um, upcoming races, the World of Outlaws. This is where the Twitter machine will break. It is the Pennsylvania Posse versus the World of Outlaws. Um, they're making up their rain date. So uh, I'm excited. I will be watching. If you're faint of heart, do not be on Twitter because it will be blowing up in Pennsylvania. If you can get to Lernerville tonight, you won't be disappointed. Huge. Yes. Uh, they're, they're back to the single race instead of the twins that they've run the past few years. Um, 25 to win. It's one of my top five favorite tracks out there, and it is going to be a great show tonight. The so. Don Martin Memorial Silver Cup. That's right. At Lernerville this evening, and yep. then Williams Grove this weekend. The Articat All Star Circuit of Champions Friday at Kokomo. Friday and Saturday at Kokomo. I'm sorry. And Friday is the prelude to the Dirt Classic in Indiana. It pays $12,500 to win. The National Sprint League kicking off the second half of this season. They are at Jackson Motorplex, Jackson Motorplex on Friday and Knoxville on Saturday. Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour, Black Hill Speedway in Rapid City, South Dakota, Friday and Saturday nights. In the King of the West Series, they're in Peter, the Peter Murphy Classic 
in Tulaware, California. It's a and race for everybody. Absolutely. Here. Go on Twitter. You can Go. find us. Make sure Watch. you follow us Get at out. Wing Nation. Make sure you tweet your seats this weekend. Thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation. You've been listening to the nation's premier winged sprint car radio program. Winged Nation. Tune in next Tuesday at noon for more talk from the dirt tracks. Winged Nation is also available on demand in the MRN.com Media Center or download from iTunes or Stitcher. Winged Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.